Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Lua Tutorials and in this one we'll take a deeper look into variables and just how we can apply things we've learned from the previous video in, in combination with these things that we're going to learn today. So first of all, what even is a variable? A variable is just a way for us to tell the computer to remember a certain value which we can reuse multiple times throughout the program. So we can create a variable but by doing a, something as simple like this. So a is 4. What, what does this mean exactly? So the equals mark indicates that whatever is on the left side is a variable name and whatever is on the right side is the value that we are assigning a variable. So a variable can be something even like a string or it can be something like a true or false value. Like I said in the previous video, true or false values are not like strings, they are totally separate things. Okay, so uh, before we run this or do anything with it, we have to save it as a Lua script and that just, you know, goes by the variables and types, dot Lua. And of course the name is not important, but what is important is the extension. Okay, so now that we did this, we can actually run it and you can see that nothing happens. Of course nothing happens because this is just an output screen. And if you want to output something, we've learned that we have to use the function print. So if we just print out the... If we just plug in the variables in our print, we can see what happens. So what happens is that even though we're saying print A, what is actually being printed is the value of A and not A literally and in the case of print word banana is getting printed in the, the pre and in the case of the statement uh, the value true is being printed so at this point you can see just kind of how this starts to get useful and if we did something like this which is totally valid of course is that we print uh, the value of two which is because a gets replaced by a value of four and then gets deducted by two and that then of course the result is two so not only can you just print out numbers or values just in general, you can also do operations that we learned in the previous video you can do. So, you know, you can do anything you want with variables like you would do with numbers. So in this example, if you just said a times a is 16 because 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so this is simple enough in, in some sense. So what we can do to kind of, you know, explain this a bit better, I think, is first of all, let's create a variable called HP and let's create a variable called bad damage. And that's just the value of 10. So what we did now is created a variable called HP that has a value of 100 and we created a variable called bad damage that has a value of 10. And what we want to do, you know, let's say that we're playing a game where we have 100 HP and every damage we take is 10. Just, you know, just for, for, just for the explanation's sake. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, obviously when we take damage, what end up, ends up happening is that damage is subtracted from HP. So we can, do, we can write something like this. But remember, this is just a formula, just an operation that we do. And the result of this operation in this case is 90, but we have to save this result. We can either save it in a new variable called maybe new HP, or what we can do is save it in a variable called HP again. And remember, because first of all, programs run top to bottom, and what that ends up happening on these cases, whatever is on the right side gets resolved first, and then gets added into the new, new variable that we've created. So in this case, what ends up happening is, we take the value of HP, and we, we assign it to 100 here, and we get the value of bad damage, which is 10. And then this operation is done first, which gives us 90, and that gets saved back into HP again. So if we printed out HP in both cases, what you would end up seeing is the first value of HP is 100, which is exactly what we would expect. And what ends up happening here is the new value of HP is 90. So you can see, you know, how you can start using these variables to describe things that are going on in the game. Like, you know, how much HP you have, how much damage you have, how fast you go, things like that. Okay, so the next thing that we will take a look at, uh, or just something that you kind of need to realize, is that sometimes when you go in the internet, you'll have you'll see things like this, you know, and this is still a variable and a value we're assigning it, but you'll see the word local before it, and that's a bit odd. But at this point, you don't have to worry about it. When we get to functions, I'm gonna explain how what exactly this means. 
but at this point, just remember that in our case, you know, when we're just writing scripts like this, it functions basically the same and, you know, just don't worry about it too much. Okay, another thing I want to explain is just how we can use and output multiple variables at once. So let's just say we have the value tree and five and they're stored in the variables A and B. And we can do what we were doing before and just print A and then another line print B. And that's okay, but what would happen if you wanted to print them out in the same line? So some, some of you that are maybe more curious might say, okay, just do this maybe, you know, okay, maybe this. But you can see that this is an error. Well, there's a way to tell Lua that what you're doing is con concatenating strings or values or variables or whatever. And that's with two dots. And what ends up happening is if you put two dots in, in inside anything in print or whatever, uh, Lua is like, okay, this is a variable. Okay, I see two dots, which means I can expect another value after that. So in this case, it gets B and what it outputs, it's three, five. But that doesn't look like our variables because that's 35. And even though it's technically correct, we want to kind of separate them a bit just so we know what's happening. So we might separate them with a comma. And like I said, you can put in any value here, not just variables. And in this case, what I did is put another string in with, uh, with that has the value of a comma. So that means that when we output it, what is going to end up happening is it's going to output A. It's going to see two dots. Okay, I'm expecting another value. Okay, the next value is a comma. And then it's going to see another two dots. Okay, I'm expecting yet another value. And then it's going to output B, which is five. And now we can see that what we outputted is three, five. But remember, this is not only uh, constricted to strings and variables. You can also output numbers with it. But just be careful because if you want to output, like outputting true works. But if you want to output true and a variable, this is something that is not going to work. And if for some reason, you know, maybe you're experimenting and you want to figure out how this is done, what you have to do is uh, not what just with true or false values, but with any value that doesn't want to get printed out. And in this case, you can see it's attempting to con con concatenate a Boolean value. And this is a Boolean value because it can be either true or false. You have to wrap it around in a function called toString. And what ends up happening, because the inner things get resolved first, is the f this is going to get resolved. It's toString function is going to be called. It's going to transform this true value, which is a Boolean value, into a string value. And then it's going to concatenate it. And this, uh, this actually works. So, you know, I just wanted to point this out. You know, you don't have to worry what exactly this function does as of now. But if you want to pr print out values uh, or even variables in this case, you would have to wrap them around in this function called toString because otherwise it doesn't know how to concatenate these uh, the Boolean values and with any other values. Okay, so you, you heard me use the word Boolean there and you're not exactly sure what a Boolean value is. A Boolean value is just a type of a value that can exist in Lua. And these are all the types that you can meet in Lua. And we've already met three of them. The number, which is just to recap, a simply a, a number. It can be an integer, a full number, or it can be a decimal number, also called the floating point number. And we've met strings, which are just uh, characters encompassed in quotation marks or in apostrophes that have a value of, you know, anything. Basically, this is a word. And we have, we've met booleans, which can be either true or false. So unlike, you know, numbers or words, there, this type is only restricted to two actual values. Okay, but what is the type nil? Type nil is basically whenever Lua cannot decide which type your value is. So if you just say something like print A, you would see that what prints out is nil. And that's because A does not exist yet, Lua recognizes that this is a variable, but because it does not have a value, like it doesn't have a number in it, a boolean string or anything else, it is just, Lua is just like, okay, so this is nil because it does not have any value yet. So at the same time, its type is nil, but nil is just a placeholder for when we don't know what exactly the type is or the value of a number is, or any other value, not just a number. So if you just set it to zero in this case, so we set it a number, Lua recognizes this, okay, this is 
a value of zero. And so this is what I'm going to output. And we're going to meet functions and tables later, later on in the series, just as a part of the course. And we're going to omit the types thread and user data. And one thing you can use to kind of see which type a variable is, or not a variable, just any value, is we can put it in this function called type. And what this function type does is, you know, again, follows the same lo function logic as print does. Whatever we put in its brackets is what it's going to evaluate. So if I put the number five in there, what it's going to output, first of all, this is going to figure out the type of this value we put in there. So in this case, it's a number. And then we're just going to print out whatever the value of this type is. So in this case, it's a number. So, okay, that's pretty straightforward. And we, if we enter something like uh, a banana, it's going to output that this is a string. Or if we enter, you know, a value of two, it's going to say it's a boolean. So that's all correct. And if we just did the same thing we did before, and we did this, it would recognize it, right? That this is a type of nil. And this is exactly what it would give us. Okay, so before we get into the examples, I just want to show you one thing that we can use to kind of interact with the program a bit better than just printing out the results to the console. So sometimes you want to enter some values yourself, and you can do that simply by creating a new variable. So let's call it uh, a red number. And we use this function called ioread. And when, what this does is reads whatever we write in the console and then it will save it in this variable. So if you just print this variable out and if you go to the console, you'll see that it's kind of stopped. And if you enter a number, let's say 109, what's going to end up happening is that this print will print out whatever we enter here. So at this point, this is pretty useless, but what we can actually end up doing is uh, you know, multiplying this number or, you know, doing any operation with it. So if we enter five, we get the result 10. Uh, so this is just a way for us to kind of com communicate with the program to kind of make things go a bit smoother. Okay, so examples. Examples will be from now on at the end of every video. Some will have more and some will have less. But basically what they are are little tasks that show you some real usage of the com components we have learned throughout the video. And I urge you to stop the video, solve them for yourself. And in, if you can't, or maybe you don't want to or whatever, you can just look at the solution after the text on the screen disappears. I'll be explaining what the each example requires you to do and kind of how to approach it. And then I'll show you the actual solution as well. Okay, so our first example requires us to create two user inputs. So that means two variables, two different variables, and performs all the basic four operations on them, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then showcases that in the console as well. Okay, so you saw the first example, and this is the solution. I'll just explain what is going on. First of all, let's run the program and see how it works. So first of all, we entered the first number, and let's just give it a number of value of five. And then we enter the second number and just give it a value of 109. And what ends up happening is that it does all these operations with the concepts we learned from this in the previous video to kind of give us a result. So what ends up happening? First of all, we print out a friendly message to enter the first number. This is done just so the user that is using the program knows what they have to do. So at this point, you know, we enter the first number, we enter the second number, and then what ends up happening is that we friendly, we give a friendly output that explains just what happens when we do all these combinations of things at once. Okay, so our second example is a bit more hands-on, and we need two variables this time, exploration bonus and damage taken. Those are the user inputs. And we use the formula that you see on the screen, which is a bit complex, but you don't have to worry about it. And you can copy that in your program, and with that you can actually calculate how many hits you've taken on a run. Okay, so this is maybe a more advanced example just because you don't know many of the functions, but the, the principle is exactly the same. And of course, if you want, you can use this code, you know, to kind of calculate things for yourself or just play with it a little. So what ends up happening is the same thing as before. First of all, we read both values from the console, then we just plug it into this formula, and then we just print out how many damage we've taken. So if you run this, and I use my today's daily to see just how well I did. So my damage penalty was 
932 and my exploration bonus was 6865. And we see that today I got hit 10 times, which is 10 half hearts of damage. So of course, if, if you wanted to transform that into full hearts of damage, you can just divide the end number by two and you would get the result you needed. So this concludes our daily's episode. If you have any questions, please, I urge you to ask them in any way you can. PM me, drop a YouTube comment, ask on the Reddit thread. Basically, that's the only way we can improve together. If you ask questions and I can actually respond to you, I'll promise, I promise I'll respond and give you the best explanation I can urge to hopefully help you understand it a little bit better. So if you click the screen now, you can get to the next video when it's released. And with that said, guys, I thank you for watching and I hope to stay, see you next time.